Good day everyone. This is again Mark Van Buladaco, one of the instructors in the application development um, course in the Bachelor of Science Information Systems. So today we will be um, discussing a new topic uh, still under the module 2, um, focusing on the different tools for evaluation and assessments of the user interface and user experience design of software and websites. So in this lesson, the students are expected to um, utilize different evaluation tools for UI and um, UX design in assessing the overall user interaction of a prototype of a software and a, um, a website. So this is the activity. You can do it on your own. You can just um, read the activity. Um, and then um, you will uh, submit it later on. Um, this activity is uh, basically for listing um, things that uh, you like and you don't like and you want to improve. Okay? All right, and then you can answer also the, our analysis questions. Um, this is more focused on uh, discussion questions relating to evaluation tools of UI and UX. So just a background, or, um, you already know what is UI, it's user interface. It's basically the different elements wherein the user can interact through a digital product or service. You already know about user interface. You have um, experienced, uh, you have encountered it in your previous courses. And this um, UI basically includes screens, touch screens, keyboards, sounds, and even lights can be considered as user interface. Okay, so you can read on your own um, regarding the brief history of the user interface, um, <coughs> which is avail available in our module. So we'll now proceed also with the definition of UX. UX is basically called um, UX based on its definition, which is user experience. It is basically an uh, improvement and a variation of user interface. So if there is already an interaction with the users and the product, software product or website product, their experience can be positive, negative, or neutral, will basically change how the user interact with those products. So according to Don Norman, um, he started to coin the term user experience back in the 90s when he started working in Apple. And he defines it as um, user experience encompasses all aspects of the end user's interaction with the company, its services, and its, pr its product. Okay, so this, is, this image here is just a a representation of a good UX in the right side and a bad UX in the left side. It's like you hate everything and even the product itself, um, the customer will be annoyed. Okay, so what is the difference of UI and UX? There is actually no major difference. However, UI is more on the elements, okay? The, the, the buttons, the, the music, the video, um, the navigation, the pictures um, that enable a user to interact with. However, the UX or user experience is what the individual in, uh, what the individual interacting with that specific product. And it basically takes away their experience in interacting though uh, on a specific product okay so one of the good example is you know google it's it has a spartan interface highlights you know the the great experience you know does it require really bells and whistles so by focusing on only the user google knows what that when they come to the site when we say google the the user knows okay i need information Okay, and they can receive it quickly. All right, so we'll be 
proceeding to the, there are a lot of evaluation tools for um, assessing UI and UX design. However, in this course, we'll just be focusing in two. One if, is the UEQ measure or the user experience questionnaire measurement. And the other, the other one is the heuristic evaluation, um, which is uh, started by Jacob Nielsen. Okay, to further understand what is UEQ, we'll be um, transferred to its um, website, which is ueq-online.org. So this is their landing page, their website. It's very simple. So UEQ is basically, um, it's a questionnaire. Okay, it's, it's um, a questionnaire which have been created by three people and each constructs of the questionnaire have been tested, have been um, applied to different um, products and services. So um, right now it is being used by um, different, uh, different UX testers and different IT companies for testing the user experience of their websites or their software product. Okay, and it is even available in 30 languages. And what is more good about it, it's free to use. The data analysis spreadsheet is actually already um, available and you can use it for free. All right. Okay, so there are actually six constructs of the UEQ. Okay, so it scales with um, the different um, impression of user experience by the users. Okay, so there will be classical usability aspects with focus on efficiency, perspicuity, and dependability, and user experience aspects which focus on originality and stimulation. Now, this this six um, this six are the basic uh, are the um, main constructs of the UEQ. So we have the attractiveness. Okay, the attractiveness which is basically the overall or general impression of the software product. So it actually like the ask a question, do users like it or do users dislike it? And then we have the perspicuity, okay? Um, it basically asks to the user, is it easy to get familiar with the, pro with the product, the software or the website? And is it easy to learn? And is it... Um, uh, in terms of learnability, is it, is it good? That means you can easily learn the navigation, etc. Then the, not, the third construct is the efficiency. So it actually answers the question, can users solve their task without unnecessary effort? Okay, does, it, does the product also react fast with the, um, with the query of the user? And the fourth construct is dependability. It actually answers the question, does the user feel in control of the interaction? Okay, is it dependable? Is it secure and predictable? Then the fourth one is stimulation. So exciting ba siya? Is it exciting? Is it motivating to use the product? Is it fun to use it? And then lastly, the sixth construct, is the design of the product creative? The, does it catch the interest of the users of the product, of the software product, of the, or the website? Okay. Right. Okay, so this, this is basic. They have um, actually a, a free handbook. Where is the handbook? Okay, you can download their free handbook here, the, the actual questionnaire and the data analysis tool. So we'll be discussing this three later on. And then there are actually short versions of the UEQ, which is UEQ short, <laughs> UEQ S, and then the ex a modular extension of the UEQ. However, we'll just be utilizing the standard UEQ construct of the six um, categories or areas, okay? So you can download the handbook. So let's open the handbook. This is basically the user experience handbook. Okay, uh, I don't need to read all of it. Okay, you can um, you can read about um, the introduction on how they have constructed the items. 
So this is basically an example of an item, attractive, and then the seven scale, seven uh, seven level scale, and then uh, unattractive. So basically, the scale of each items is um, it is scaled into from negative three to positive three. So negative three, negative two. Negative 1, 0, positive 1, positive 2, and positive 3. So as you notice, there is a positive and negative um, values in order to identify um, the, the perception or the experience of the user, whether it's positive, negative, or neutral. So negative 3 is basically the most negative, and then 0 is no neutral, and then positive 3 is the most positive. Okay, if you want to know how um, the UAQ is constructed and validated, you can read their um, lecture here. Uh, I mean the the article. Okay, I already have um, discussed that there are six scales or six constructs with twenty six items in total. So we can go back now uh, in the attractiveness. It's pure valence dimension. Okay. Perspicuity, efficiency, and dependability are pragmatic quality aspects. Okay, this means there is an actual goal that needs to be set and needs to be measured. Okay, and then the stimulation and novelty are hedonic quality aspects, not really goal directed. So, uh, attractiveness has six items. Okay, and then all the other five. Um, scales or construct has four items, a total of 26 items. So four times five is 20. So there are other five constructs other than attractiveness. And then the six items in the con con attractiveness is basically composed of uh, in total the 26 items. All right, so this is the, the scale structure. And the English items per scale. So let's just see each of those. So um, we have the attractiveness. We have the six um, items. It's, is it annoying, enjoyable? Is it bad or good? Is it unlikable or pleasing? Is it unpleasant or pleasant? Is it unattractive, attractive? Or is it unfriendly or friendly? As you notice, the items is just in one word. So make the user um, understand more the, the question or the item and then they can respond, respond quickly of, uh, in, the, in the questionnaire as well. And then we have the pragmatic quality and then the hedonic quality. In the pra pragmatic quality, we do have the efficiency, the slow, fast, inefficient or efficient, and practical, practical, cluttered, or organized and then perspicuity not understandable or understandable difficult to learn or easy to learn complicated or is it easy confusing or is it clear and also in the dependability unpredictable predictable obstructive supportive not secure and secure and does not meet expectations and meets expectations and also in the hedonic quality, there are four items on each of the constructs. We have the stimulation, inferior, valuable, boring, or is it exciting? <coughs> Not interesting, or is it interesting? Demotivating, or is it motivating? And for the novelty, dull, or creative, conventional, or inventive, usual, or leading edge, and conservative, or a, is it innovative? Okay. Alright, so these are just a typical um, application scenario of the UEQ. So um, research questions can be answered by quantitative measurements using the data analysis tool, which is free um, from the UEQ website. You can also compare the user products as well. Okay, this is a comparison of two hypothetical product versions. Okay, um, the version A and version B. So, in, as you notice here, the version A shows that 
there are uh, uh, have a larger um, score except for the novelty where in um, the values are approximately the same with um, version B all right so you can read more of this so that the explanation of the figure 2 okay so this is an example of a result of the product <clears throat> of the data analysis so we'll be discussing data analysis later all right so um here we have the attractiveness which is this is the box plots of the attractiveness as you notice and then perspicuity efficiency dependability site stimulation and novelty so obviously it shows extremely positive evaluation so basically the interpretation of the means here is that the values negative 0 0.8 and 0 0.8 represent a neutral neural evaluation of the corresponding scales okay so let's actually move to the um, questionnaire okay you can download the questionnaire here and um where is it okay so we will be using the english of course so this is just a draft of a questionnaire they have um, already prepared for us <clears throat> and then you can just tweak um, the instructions and how you deliver or present the items as well okay so let's just read here for the assessment of the product please fill out the following questionnaire and the questionnaire consists of pairs of contrasting attributes that may apply to the product okay the circles between attributes represent the gradations between the opposites and you can express your agreement with the attributes by taking the circle that most close to the reflexor expressions. Okay, there is another instructions here. Spontaneously, don't think too long about your decisions. So that is the reason is there it's just a one word or two word um, or a phrase of the item because so that the the users will just give their quick um, responses of their experience of using the product as well okay so these are the questions so it is a scale of one to seven and then we can transform that later on to negative three to three okay okay so this are all total of 26 items and you can also check out their um, online questionnaire uh, just your basis of creating your own um, questionnaire to be trend, to, to be converted into an online form so we'll be using the full UEQ and here it is okay so you can just you know pick that and everything so you can create your own questionnaire uh, which is similar to this all right so let's say for example you have let's say 50 respondents of your questionnaire and it is important that you already have it on a spreadsheet or, an, or a google sheet using the based on the google form responses and then we'll be um, discussing now more on the data analysis tool okay so this is the data analysis tool so basically the goal of this tool is to you know to make it as easy as possible for all of us this is already um, uh, available here in um, ueq you can just download the the data analysis tool here okay the tool then basically automatically calculates everything you just need to understand how it is calculated and there are uh, graphs that can be shown for visualization of the results as well and you can actually change the um the language however we can just understand english so let's just choose english okay so that this tool basically contains um 
these worksheets. So first is the data. This is where you will put the data, your raw data, yung 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and yung 26 items. And it depends also on to how many respondents you have. And the data is the only worksheet that you will be um, modifying. Okay? You don't need to modify other worksheets because it will automatically um, update and provide results. And then the DT is actually the transformation of the data. Um, since the order of the items is randomized in the questionnaire to minimize answer tendencies. So it will transform whether it's in the negative left, negative term left, or positive term right. So the transformed data are used for the further calculation. So yung, yung, yung raw data will be transformed into a... Um, the polarity, the negative 3 to ne positive 3, and then yun na yung gagamitin for further calculations and analysis. The results worksheet is basically the main results of the questionnaire. Okay, It provides you the scale means, the mean and standard deviation per item are calculated, etc. And it also provides you your um, graphical, uh, the graphical presentation. And then confidence intervals, it's basically um, the scale means, the interval of the scale means and for the mean of each item are calculated as well. And another is the answer distribution. Okay, I really don't know bakit. Ayun yung mag... It's the scale consistent, the answer distribution is the distribution of answers from values 1 to 7 for each item. So this can help to find items that show a po polarization of opinions where there are many negative or whether there are many positive answers can be found. And then scale consistency, we will be using Kronbach Alpha coefficient and the Gottman's Lambda 2 coefficient per scale are calculated. So you can actually show here um, there are scales with a, a small value which is lesser than 0 0.5 and will be treated carefully in the interpretation. So, mas, kung lesser than 50 responses kayo, then it is important to interpret these value, va values carefully by um, looking at the scale consistency. So, in such cases, a small value for these coefficients may result solely from sampling effects and many not indicate a real problem. And then for the benchmark, it shows you in an easy way how good the evaluated product is in compared to other products. And then inconsistencies on this worksheet, the data are analyzed for inconsistent answers. Let's say, for example, a participant that answered at least a part of the items just randomly without any thinking. So there is a possibility you might remove this data before you calculate the results. Okay, however, um, as to IS412 concerns, um, the three data sheets, the data, the DT, and the results is good enough. Okay, so for, you know, if you want to exceed the expectation of your instructor, you can further um, uh, understand and analyze the confidence intervals, distributions of the answers, and scale consistency, benchmark, and inconsistencies, inconsistencies as well. Okay, as mentioned, this is the data um, worksheet. <clears throat> you can actually um, uh, enter a maximum of 1,000 participants of the 26 items um, UEQ or user experience questionnaire. So I only entered here 255 items. I think 200, yeah, 255. That is basically 255 items. So if you have a Google form and then um, you can just get their, you can just get their, um, their responses and then copy those responses and then put it in this date, data worksheet. So once you have entered the um, data worksheet here, 
you don't need to really follow the 1,000 participants. It's just a maximum. Or my example here is 255. But however, we appreciate it is if it is more than 50 responses so that there will be uh, no inconsistencies of your data. Okay, so as you notice, the answers here are in a scale of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So after you place your um, responses of your questionnaire, you check the data transformation here to, trans to basically transform the data, the trans to basically transform the data into its polarization, whether it's in the negative term or the far negative term or the far positive term. Okay? So, that, as mentioned earlier, the positive 3 represents the most positive and then the negative 3 represents the most negative. You don't need to change or to modify this worksheet. It will automatically mo automatically determine that the data trans uh, the transform data of its polarization based on the data you have entered in the data worksheet again do not erase anything here okay it is already been uh, uh, reference to the data worksheet okay so as you notice the data is transformed the negative 7 became negative 3, and then the positive 7 became positive 3 in the 255 data. And then we have here the next table here. This is just a scale means per, per person. That means um, what is the scale for attractiveness. Okay. And then perspicuity, what's it, the scale per pers perspicuity? So for the attractiveness, the question for A4, L4, N4, P4, X4, and Y4. So as you notice, it is uh, distributed um, not by in sequence, and so that it will um, reduce the bias of the user. And then for the perspicuity, um, there are four items. Efficiency, there are four items. And dependability for four items and stimulation four items as well and novelty four items okay and then you will go to the results okay so you after <coughs> getting the transformed data and then getting the scale means per person you can now interpret the means of the scales so the ueq um does not produce the overall score score for the experience so you need to use other um, the kpi extension for this um, because of the construction of the questionnaire it does not make no sense to build such an overall score okay for example by calculating the mean overall skills since this value cannot be interpreted properly okay so wala pong overall yung ueq so only um, determining the attractiveness, the pragmatic quality, and the hedonic quality of the results. Okay? So, in this results, values between negative 0.8 and positive 0.8 represents more or less a neutral evaluation of corresponding skills. So values greater than 0.8 represents a positive evaluation and values lesser than negative 0.8 represents a negative evaluation. So the range of scales, if you have mentioned I if you have listened earlier, that negative three is the horribly bad um, responses, and then the positive three is an extremely good responses. Then, but in real applications in general, only values in restricted range will be observed. Okay. So let us see. Um, these are the each items. Okay. So in item one, the mean is 1.6, the variance is 1.9, and the standard deviation is 1.4. So you don't need to change it because as you notice, naka ano na po yan siya. Naka. Hmm. What you call this? Naka ano na po siya, naka formula, function. Okay? So the item 1 is under an, in the attractiveness um, scale. 
and then its left is annoying and right. And then for the item two, the question is, is it non-understandable or is it um, understandable? And then it is under the perspicuity <laughs> na scale. For an item number three, is it creative or dull? It is under the novelty scale. For the item four, is it easy to learn, difficult to learn? It's in the perspicuity scale as well. And then valuable or is it inferior stimulation scale? Now, item six, is it boring, exciting, stimulation scale also? Item seven, is it not in interesting or is it interesting? It's a stimulation scale also. Item eight, unpredictable or predictable? And it's in the dependability scale. Is it fast or is it slow? Uh, so ito yung under sa efficiency scale as well. And is it inventive and conventional? It's in the uh, novelty scale and so on and so forth. I don't need to read everything. So you just need to understand the 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 leftmost arm and the rightmost arm, and then sancha na belong na um, scale. So it also shows in the results the mean, the variance, and standard deviation of each items. And in this part of the results, ito na yung para nakasummary na ano, nakasummary na po ito na um, ito, this is already the summarized mean on the variance of each scales. Again, there is really no overall scales. There is, it's really hard to interpret the overall scale of the user experience. So, um, I would suggest you can um, interpret based on its scale or interpret based on its um, category or quality. Is it attractiveness, pragmatic, and hedonic? Okay. So, the attractiveness, ang um, kanyang mean is um, one point, sorry, bakit ganyan? 1.473 and the variance in 1.31. Perspicuity is 1.642 and 1 1.29, 1 1.6, 1 1.10. 1 Dependability, 0 0.83. And then the stimulation is 1.135 or 1.13. And novelty is 1.7. Ayong mean is 0 0.774 and then 1.17. <coughs> so this is also the result as you notice. Eh, those, as mentioned earlier, dito di ba na mention ko dito, here, please take note of this ha. Um, 0 point, negative 0 0.8 to negative, Positive 0 0.8 represents neutral evaluation. Then, yung values greater than 0 0.8 is a positive evaluation. So, you can use that for your interpretation later on. And then, the values lesser than negative 0 0.8 represents negative evaluation. So, let's go back with our um, results. <clears throat> So in that attractiveness, it's basically higher than 0 0.8. So it, it has a positive evaluation. And then perspicuity is also um, greater than 0 0.8. It has a, a very large score of 1.64. It's have a good and positive evaluation as well in terms of perspicuity. And efficiency also, it's a positive evaluation and dependability and stimulation. However, in the novelty part, it's 0 0.774. Um, there is a neutral, um, it's a neutral evaluation. That means it's either positive or it's either um, negative, nor negative as well. So it's in the neutral evaluation. But you can further discuss, as you notice, it's almost in the 0 0.8. So that means there's a possibility if there are more respondents, um, it could um, have a larger score and it could be a positive evaluation. Again, um, UEQ does not calculate the overall mean 
because it's it's difficult to to interpret um, on each constructs as well. All right, so <clears throat> this is the graph based on these results. So please do not change it. Okay, we you can just copy it and then paste it in a word file, including also this table you can place it in a word file for your interpretation and it's actually required to really have an interpretation okay so as you notice the attractiveness perspicuity efficiency and dependability and stimulation has a positive evaluation so you can further interpret why there has a positive um why there is a positive evaluation of these five um scales um, based on the evidences that is available in the software product or the website. And in the novelty, it's a neutral evaluation. And then you can further discuss bakit ito neutral evaluation. Ano, ano kaya ang ibig sabihin ito? And then, um, you can either use this or use this, but I prefer this like a box plot kind of graph. So, pwede itong makapi doon. And then this is the, the pragmatic and hedonic quality. As I mentioned earlier that the attractiveness is more on a... Um, saan, saan ba yung nakita ko? The attractiveness is more on a value dimension. And then it further <coughs> categorizes each scales into, into pragmatic or hedonic. Okay, so the pragmatic quality are the perspicuity, efficiency, and dependability. So, na uh, you don't need to change it because it's already been in formula. So that means the attractiveness is in one point forty seven. So you can um, further discuss um, about the attractiveness of the software product and then the um, website. And then in the pragmatic quality, which is it includes the perspicuity, efficiency, and eva. Dependability, it's 1.5, it's still positive evaluation. And then you can further discuss why it got a positive evaluation in terms of the pragmatic quality. And then the hedonic quality, it's stimulation originality. It's 0 0.95, it's more than 0 0.8. That means it's still in the positive evaluation as well. Okay? So when we say pragmatic quality, it describes the task related to the quality aspects of the product, the software, or the website. And the hedonic quality is the non-task-related quality aspects of the product, the software, or the website. All right. So this is the interpretation or the visualization of the attractiveness, pragmatic quality, and the hedonic quality. Then we have the confidence intervals. Um, I don't need to really discuss in detail the confidence interval. However, the, what you are seeing right now is the measure for the precision of the estimation of the scale mean. And then this is the answer distribution. So this is just parang how each responses is distributed per item. And then the scale consistency, okay? In the scale, scale consistency, it, it determines whether a specific scale is consistent based on the responses. And there might be some responses that you need to remove based on this. However, in normal um, analysis, you don't need to really um, uh, conduct a scale consistency using Kronbach alpha coefficient and then the Gutman's lambda coefficient. However, if you want to exceed the interpretation and expectation of your instructor, you can interpret the scale consistency of the UEQ. And then this is the benchmark as well. The, the, the benchmark is basically, it relates to the existing values from a benchmark data. That means there was actually uh, uh, a, a, a study already conducted and then you will um, compare it to the the initial study conducted with the study that you have conducted. Okay, again, so you it's just a comparison to your to the benchmark study. Okay, so 
you don't need to really do it on your um, capstone project or on your activity for the IS412 but if, however if you want for additional points and um, if you want to impress your instructor you can actually do it and then inconsistencies that this is for the lesser than 50 responses um, you can the this data analysis tool will identify um, ano yung mga items na parang ano parang may inconsistent data or inconsistent items or inconsistent um, responses okay yeah and then sample size and then KPI calculation this is for eto na yung parang ano if you are using the extension of the KPI um, but we are not using the KPI extension because it does have a lot more items. It's more analysis. So, pwedeng wala na lang to. Okay? Alright. And then, the items in different languages. Okay. So, yun. So, those are the, um, the what do you call this? The, the, user, ex, uh, the user experience questionnaire. Okay, yeah. So if you have questions, you can just ask to your instructor and then you can actually rewatch this videos a, a many number of times if you want to rewatch it. Okay, we'll now proceed with, um, we'll now proceed with the 10 usability heuristics of user interface design. So a heuristic evaluation is basically an inspection and checklist of the usability of a software product or a website, okay? Mainly used to identify um, any design issues associated with the UI. So on the first nag-coin or nag-popularize -pop ng um, usability heuristics is Jacob Nielsen, okay? Yung version ni Jacob Nielsen is the most used usability heuristics. So we'll discuss the the 10 usability heuristics. So first is the visibility of system status. Manan ata ko magandang dito. Sana yun. Wait, i-open ko muna. Yan. I have a good visualization here. So... Visibility of um, system status, it's basic, basically where in the designs keep the users informed about what is really going on on the user interface of the system or the software. It could be um, in a feedback or a response, basically. Okay? So when users know about the current system status, they ba basic basically they 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 know beforehand the interactions and to determine what are the possible steps ahead and then there will be interactions that are predictable by the users and they trust the product with with that you know, as well as the brand so example of the um, visibility system status you are here so parang there might be an indicator that you are here. It can uh, map, uh, let's say, indicators on mall maps to show people where they currently are to help them understand where to go next. And the next is actually the match between the system and the real world. Okay, so that part, <clears throat> there might, the system should be able to model um, the real world somehow so that the the end user can appreciate the user interface more, okay? So, so it should speak the, the language of the user, okay? English is the universal language. And then you can use words, just, don't just use symbols or icons. It would be better if it is words, it's more personalized, and phrases and concepts, okay? Rather than jargons that are really uh, highly technical jargons. So example of this is when stove top control match the layout of the heating elements, users can quickly understand which control maps to which heating element. 
And the next is the user control and freedom, the third um, heuristic evaluation item. So users perform actions by mistake. Okay? So they, they might be, of course, it, we're, we're not really 100% perfect. Their users can, can do mistakes also. So they need a clearly marked emergency exit if they have committed a mistake on, on the navigation example to leave the unwanted state of their using of the system. Okay, so an example, there might be digital space spaces need quick emergency exits just like physical spaces do. Okay, so let's say for example, let's say cancel or um, go back. Okay, um, go to the main page. You know, so parang may mga um, ganun na mga um, navigations if the user have committed mistake like um, na manisya ng pindot or he and he or she entered um, an unwanted part of the system or he submitted and then namalisya and there must be a emergency exit as we call. The fourth one is the consistency and standards. So users should not have to wonder whether different words, situations, or actions mean the same thing. So follow the platform conventions. Okay, so there must be consistency on your system and it must follow standards. Example, yung login na button. Usually the login button is in the or the login um, details or login button or logout button is in the upper right corner of the website. Okay? So, we we do this practice and it must be consistent as well in your software. So, an example of that is check-in counters are usually located in the front of Dell. So, this consistency meets customer expectations. Then, we have the error prevention. So, Basically, this is to prevent error. So it would be better if there are, um, if your system can validate and verify the user inputs. Because most of the errors is from the, 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 the things or the data entered by the end user. So the system must be able to detect and capture these errors beforehand before it will be inserted into the database. Okay? So, good error messages are important, but the best designs prevent problems from occurring in the first place. Okay? So, there are two types of errors, slips and mistakes. The slips are those unconscious downloading errors na inattention lang sa, sa paggamit ng system. So, mistakes are conscious errors based on the, the mismatch of uh, the user's mental model and the uh, system design as well, okay? So in real world scenario, ground rails or curvy mountain roads basically prevent drivers from falling off cliffs. So parang itong example ng heuristic design. Then number six, recognition rather than recall, okay? Minimize the user's memory load, okay? So kung baga, Make it sure that the system, the website, or the product itself can make the user recognize um, a specific state, a specific page, and by making elements and actions and options visible to everyone. And it will avoid making users remember. They need to just recall, ano ba ito? Ano ba ito? Anong next nga? So it would be better that, that the system will be able unconsciously to rec uh, make the end users recognize a specific page or a state of the system. So humans have limited short-term memories. <laughs> that is basically true. Okay, so user interfaces prom must promote recognition. And basically, para you, it will reduce the effort of using your cognitive part of your brain <laughs> to recognize or to, to recall ano bang dapat gawin next. You know? So it must be able to uh, make the users learn and recognize ano yung next na gagawin. Okay. 
And then number six, flexibility and efficiency of use. Shortcuts. There must be shortcuts. It must. It is basically hidden from novice users. However, for those experienced users, it will speed up the interaction between the between the software and the website. Okay. So there must be processes that are flexible by expert users, and then it can it must be carried out in different ways. So, depende na lang sa user kung ano yung pipiliin niya. The hard way or the easy way. Okay. So, in in layman's or in real-world examples, regular routes are listed on maps. But, of course, locals, they have more knowledge of the area. Where they can take shortcuts. So, of course, if you are local, you will be using this kind of shortcut. And then number eight is more on the aesthetic design. Wait lang. Aesthetic and minimalist design. Ako, it's, I am more on minimalist. Ayoko nang masyadong cluttered yung design. Okay? So interfaces should not contain information that are not relevant to your website or to the process that the user is doing. Every unit of information uh, place in the website or software, an interface competes with the relevant units of information. Okay? So, yun. So, it must be more on the aesthetic. Maganda tingnan. The, it's very pleasing to the eye. Yun. And they're, they're, it's clean. It's uncluttered. Wala masyadong information. And... It's just being direct. And the color combination is really good. That means there might be a com uh, contrasting colors or complementing colors that are blended to each other to make the system or the, the, the colors and the, the, the face of the system or the website that is pleasing to the eye. Number nine, recognize and diagnose and recover from errors. So error messages should be expressed in plain language. Okay? Walang error code. Error 1, 2, 3. Ano yun? Ano yung error 1, 2, 3? <laughs> Hindi alam ng mga ano yun, ng mga unexperienced users, inexperienced users. Even me, an an kung saan ganun yung 502 gateway? What is this? Okay? So, you precisely indicate the problem. And then you provide solution. And then number 10, help and document documentation. So it would be better if you have an F1. Mr. F1. Kung meron si Mr. Google, dapat si system mo, meron Mr. F1. That means it provides a documentation of the, let's say, for example, if the end user, meron sila mga frequently asked questions, they can, um, they can, Check there in the F1 or your help and documentation file. And then kung may mga, uh, uh, let's say, user manual can be placed in the <coughs> help documentation file. So it may be necessary to provide documentations to help our end users understand to complete their tasks. Okay, so there are 10 areas. Ang medyo mataas masyado yung checklist ng ano ng heuristic evaluation. This is an example of a checklist. <clears throat> so we have here the visibility of system status. There are 30, 29 questions. There are usually yes or no question. And then the this is the match between the system real world. There are 24 questions. And then user control freedom. There are 23 questions. Then consistency and standards. This, there, are, there are 39, 51 questions. No. Ah, yun, yeah. And then help users recognize, diagnose, and recover from errors. There are 21 questions. Error prevention. There are 15 questions. Recognition rather than recall. 40 questions, flexibility and minimalist design, 16 questions, aesthetic and minimalist design, 12 questions, and then help in documentation, 
23 questions. And then there are the 11th area, which is skill. However, um, parang ang iba, it's actually an updated of the Hakob Nielsen Heuristic Evaluation. So you can actually utilize the skills um, construct of the heuristic evaluation. So the system should support, extend, supplement, or enhance the user's skills, background, and knowledge and expertise, not replace them. Okay? There are 22 questions, and then the 12th, the pleasurable and respectful interaction with the users. So, your interaction, your messages, dapat, it must be pleasurable now and respectful, basically, which enhances the quality of her or his work life as well. And the users should be treated with respect. Dapat natin siyang i-remember. There are 17 questions. And then privacy as well. Is there a privacy? So there are three questions. So this there are three. There are actually 13 in this version of the checklist, but the original is 10. Po. Okay? So you, you can um, let your respondents I usually yung mga heuristic evaluation naman. These are, ang mga nag-respond dito is basically yung expert talaga sa IT and some selected end users of the system. So medyo matagal siya i-answer because of the fact that there are a lot of questions. So that is why um, it, hindi masya, hindi need na maraming tao na dapat mag-respond with the um, with the heuristic evaluation. Siguro at most 10 people lang ang um, mag-respond with the heuristic evaluation. Okay? So you can read our um you can read our discussions here and then you have actually an application here that you need to answer. You need to conduct an evaluation using the UEQ measure. Um, I will we will just a provide a more specific um, um, discussion a more specific um, discussion of the um, UEQ, U, for the UEQ measure in the heuristic evaluation so you um, you will just select 10 one out of 10 the websites and then you will conduct the UEQ measure and then for the UEQ measure you need at least 50 respondents. Okay, and then um, for the heuristic evaluation, at least five. So, tatlong, um, dalawa or tatlong IT expert, when say IT expert yung ano talaga. Ah, siguro para mahirap, no, mahirap ma, um, to look for an IT expert. Isa na lang. Isang IT expert, then apat na parang uh, they have experience using that specific website. Okay, so you will put your answers on uh, in on a slide presentation form, and then you in the on the UEQ you will need to submit um, the 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 file. Okay, yung parang yung ano nyo, yung um, what do you call this? Yung result of the your of the you. Um, yung actual raw data, yung data analysis um, spreadsheet file, <clears throat> submit nyo yun siya. And then also the heuristic evaluation responses na Excel file. And then you will create a spreadsheet na, ano, spreadsheet na uh, <clears throat> for the responses of the heuristic evaluation. And then slide presentation also for the uh, actual results ng UEQ and the heuristic evaluation. <clears throat> as for the heuristic evaluation, as you notice, yes or no lang ito. So that means in the visibility system status, you will just count how many yes in the visibility system status, how many no, and how many not applicable. Ganun lang, okay? So another, let's say, dito sa match between system real world. In this item, my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight yeses, and then one, two, three, four, <clears throat> five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Not applicable, and one, two, three, three no responses. Okay. 
Alright, so details of this application will be provided in your learning management system page. Okay, so that is all. If you have more questions, you can ask your instructor. Thank you for listening. I hope you have learned a thing or two with our discussion today.